Discover the tech that inspires the pros and powers today's music industry. Well, that tells me we are into a new show, a new episode of Music Gear Talk, powered by the mighty Intertalk Media. Connect to all things music. And uh, we want to... Uh, Give a big shout out to our good friends over at Mission Engineering and uh, all the rest of the folks uh, that were participating, Sabian, uh, Eventide, Line 6. I mean, the list goes on. We just had an amazing contest, the NAMM celebration we just just, uh, completed and all the people who participated. We want to give a big thanks to them. And uh, that brings me to our current guest, who is one of our partners uh, in uh, all of that fun stuff. Uh, we uh, We have Colt. Westbrook from Walrus Audio. Welcome, Colt. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Happy to be on the show. Yeah, happy man. to be here. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. the president of Walrus Audio, and uh, uh, all we have to tell him is that uh, uh, we were just fun, playfully talking that we've interviewed his his pedals many times on our show, Sharpen the Axe, and uh, with Paul, and uh, uh, we found the, the these these pedals, which are just amazing, folks. I have to tell you that uh, they definitely <laughs> they definitely bring out the the passion in the plane so that's the that's the key they don't they don't mask it they don't cover it they bring it out and that's what uh, you know that's what they do and uh, so colt man um it's been a wild ride uh, I, I know you guys had a fun time with with this nam celebration uh we got a new nam coming up uh you know it's it's gonna be good are you guys gonna be there yeah we're gonna be there we're gonna be in nashville uh exhibiting and releasing uh, a couple more things for the year, uh, and uh, yeah, some really fun announcements, some new partnerships uh, to announce with artists and things like that. And uh, yeah, so we're we're coming in with some energy and some news and and good vibes. So yeah, we're pretty we're pretty excited to head over to Nashville and, and start up. Perfect, man. That is that is incredible here, and uh, uh, yeah, that we're we're gonna be there too. So we're gonna we're gonna come out, folks. I'm just gonna already say this right now. We're gonna. We're going to actually, uh, if we can pull Colt away from all the, the conversations he's going to be having with uh, the, the people that are attending, uh, we're going to try to get him on camera, uh, giving us a little bit of, a, of a, a full insight onto the pedals. If you're, I'm putting you on the spot, man, in front of a lot of people. So, <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Hopefully, you're going to say yes. That's that's my whole goal. So, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I I accept. I accept. We'll be there. You'll be there. So we should be there together and put it on the video. Put it on the old video screen, stuff yeah, like that. It, Sounds like a great idea. It, exactly, exactly, man. Well, you know, brother, this this is this show is all about, you know, this this these these things that we call musical gear. Some of us look at it as as toys, some of them is look at this as tools. Uh, you know, uh-huh. and, and you got started in this business. Um, obviously um, probably somewhere, you know, in the range of being a musician or having a passion about audio. Um, so with that said, how did you get started, man? Let's, let's kind of just, let's, let's go there, man. What, how, why did you start Walrus Audio? And where did that name come from? Well, so, so that is a, yeah, that's such a, that's such an interesting question. So the, so the whole story with Walrus Audio is Walrus actually started in 2011 in Norman, Oklahoma. Okay. And it started with a guy uh, named Brady Smith, and he start he started Walrus Wal- Walrus. I have a list today. He started Walrus uh, in 2011 in Norman, Oklahoma, uh, with some investors and, and things like that. And then uh, he spun off and started his own company in 2014 called Old Blood Noise Endeavors, and they are still down in Norman. And so, when that happened, I came in. Uh, in 2014, and started developing products with my my friend Jason Stalls, who's here at Walrus Audio, and uh, so we've been doing Walrus since 2014, so about four years, and uh, but Walrus is going for about three years before that. So okay. products that were products that were around before we were were like the Void. You guys remember some of them? The Void. The Void is still still here. The Deep Six. Uh, the, the, 
first version of the Iron Horse, first version of Burr, um, and uh, trying to the Transit. Everybody knows the Transit. I'm kidding. No, but not a lot of people buy the Transit, but okay. it's out there. Yeah. Uh, and then the Janus, the Janus, the one with the joysticks. And yeah. So those are some products that were that were in existence with Walrus before uh, Jason and I were here at Walrus. So. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, and then we came into Walrus, and then there's other products since we've been here, things like the Julia, Chorus Vibrato, the Power Supplies, the HS and the Phoenix, the uh, Fathom and Fathom Reverb and the ARP 87 Delay, uh, stuff like that. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I came in, and I, it is a mix of – I'm more of a guitar player than I am an engineer, and uh, and, and so, so I – I, we, Jason and I, we work together a lot on development, and uh, and and good things. Most of the time, good things come from it. You guys don't ever see the bad things that come from it because we don't release those. But <laughs> but there the, that I'm, might be fun I'm, if you did though. You I'm did. eyeing over it. I'm looking at the shelf of, of a bunch of them. So yeah. <laughs> We so should do. A, we should do a show, the Paul. We should do a show on all uh, the pedals that never uh, made how, it. To, uh, how did this get made? Uh, how did this get made? <laughs> how, no, how, how did how did this not get made? Guitar <laughs> pedals. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I think it's a bad idea. I think it's a bad <laughs> idea, but it would sure be fun. It would be really. It would be fun. So, totally fun. But yeah, some of the sounds that would come out, I would just. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know if that would be considered musical. You know what? Eric would probably love them all. Yeah. Anything that glitches out and sounds like the battery's dying, he is all over it. So we, we, Eric yeah, uh, yeah. is Paul's show host with Sharp and the Axe, who loves like quirky sounding pedals. I mean, he, and he he's a pit pedal fanatic. At some point, we need to get you. Maybe at uh, the Winter Nam, we'll have Eric go meet with you, and because he loves your gear. I mean, we all love your gear, but uh, you know, he's yeah. like, he's fanatical. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I'd love to meet him. That, 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 and that sounds like a really bad idea. I don't think <laughs> I'd be on that show. Yeah, it's mostly. I wish. I wish I could say it was like unique and crazy things, but most of it is just like most of it's like overdrive that just kind of suck. You know, don't have any sparkle or pizzazz or modulation effects that just really weren't doing anything different than what was already out there. And yeah. so, if it kind of is underwhelming most of the time, then it's like, ah, let's just let's scrap it and we'll start over with something else so yeah that, that's cool. so you didn't have an engineering background how did you get to where you were designing pedals and you know how do you how do you navigate your way from your navigate your way in circuit boards and you know electrodes and all that other fun stuff yeah so so again it's a mix of it's a mix of jason and i working together so i mean there's there's a lot of uh, audio quality and audio color and characteristic that that you're shooting for and you're aiming for, and then there's like the the functionality and the the down to the details and the nitty gritty of how it's actually going to work and on a PCB layout and and how it's going to be manufactured and things like that. And so Jason is the one that is more on the engineering side than I am, and okay. so he is the one that that breathes it and brings all the things. Uh, from the whiteboard uh, into into life, and so uh, he's got an engineering background, and he worked for the F uh, the FFA for a long time, and I pulled him from that. I tried my hand at developing a product by myself without him, and it's called the Vanguard Dual Phaser. And it is not in existence anymore, and there is a reason why. <laughs> it's on that shelf so, of uh, – Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we put that out, and it was really exciting for a while. I was like, I hate phasers, so we should do two phasers in one, and uh, and then it just make it really weird. And, and <laughs> we did it, and there's some people like maybe eight or nine that really like it, and then the rest of – the rest of the world said, "Yeah, I think I'm good." So I think I'm gonna take my three hundred dollars and take it somewhere else. Yeah, all those so, pedals, all those pedals remind me of the the old uh, uh, Christmas cartoon. Uh, was, was it uh, Rudolph or whatever, where they had the Island of Misfit toys? So it would be like the Island of Misfit pedals. <laughs> the, dual, the Vanguard, the, yeah. the Vanguard would definitely be there. Yeah, <laughs> the, uh, of Misfit pedals. So. That, that's awesome. Which yeah, is the yeah, show yeah. that you would not be want to be on. You wouldn't want to be the uh, a herb. You would not want to be Herbie, I guess. 
No, I just, I, I, I'll, I'll find a different island to, to live on a vacation on if that's okay. That's all right. So, yeah. well, that's, that's cool, man. We've got about five minutes left in, in this segment. I mean, it goes fast, right? Uh, it's just crazy. So, yeah. how did you become president when you started working for the company? You know, that transition, usually the entrepreneurs will stay around a little bit longer. I mean, I don't want to probably, but that's just curiosity, uh, kill the cat kind of thing. Yeah. So no. So what? So the beginning wall started with uh, with some investors, and so I uh, and it sounds really businessy, but investors these are just like guys here in Oklahoma City that play music and stuff like that. So uh, they pulled together and wanted to start a guitar pedal company, and so I I knew those guys from from music or from like you know hanging out in studios or things like that. And so it was really just kind of a relationship thing. And I was working for, I was doing like a, a Fortune 100 job, you know, at a place called Chesapeake Energy here in Oklahoma City. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, wearing slacks and, uh, you know, the, the blazer every day. And, uh, and, uh, well, I, and I knew these guys and this, this spot came up to kind of, you know, they wanted to do some new things and take Walrus in a, a different direction and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and it sounded like something I was totally on board for. And so I came in and, uh, started down in Norman and there were three people when I came here and, uh, and it was, it was, uh, the days consisted of, uh, you know, a little bit of dev, a little bit of product dev, and then I ran like four different email accounts. I was customer service and then artist relations and then I was sales and then I had my own personal email and then shipping and packaging and all that kind of stuff. And I was taping boxes and then driving to drive to UPS and so it was just in twenty fourteen it was it was kind of just a You were the all a, all round just, guy, man. It, it was a pretty small operation, so it was it was a big team effort and then uh yeah, and then we moved uh HQ up about 30 miles north to Oklahoma City, yeah. and uh, that's where a lot of us live here. We're off from Oklahoma City mostly, and yeah, we're, we got about uh, 12, 12, 13 folks here now, and nice, uh, nice. and we're we're running on all cylinders, and you know things are things are stressful, but we're stressed about different things now. So you yeah. know, it's great. Yes, yeah. when it's, you stress about fantastic. when you stress about success versus. Uh, Imminent <laughs> failure. That's always nice, you know. That when you're because you guys are doing great, man. You guys are congratulations again. Con- kudos for all the stuff that thanks. you've been doing. Well, so. thanks. I appreciate it. It's a yeah. It's a it's a fun place to work. It's a high octane CF a lot of days and yeah. uh, and, and sometimes sometimes we're like, man, we're really getting things right. Fantastic, you yeah, know. Yeah. That's, so that's what it's all yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Is it, it's it's building on those successes. You know, those milestones that kind of give you go. All right, we're on the right track. We're making this happen and stuff like that. And in fact, I want to kind of uh, uh, you know bring up the topic of people always say that, uh, well, with, you know, the with the bankruptcy, uh, you know, tales about Gibson and then of course our friends over yeah. at uh, uh, you know some of these other retailers that are having challenges. Uh, you know, you go, ah, oh, is the music industry dying? And you know, we had more people at Nam last year than we ever had before. Um, Rolling Stone just came out with an article saying that Gibson in their, uh, you know, in their financial filings did, uh, 10% better selling guitars than they did the previous year. So they weren't doing bad. They just put a lot of investments into other areas that were not guitars that made it very challenging right. for them. So I think there's a big tale for that. We're about ready to go into this commercial break. And I want to give a shout out to our good friends over at Pitbull Audio who were partners with us as well. I forgot to mention those. God, it's terrible of me because uh, they're good friends. They're, you know, they're really, uh, you know, the amazing, amazing company that is on the rise. They, since we started working with them, they've doubled in size and they were not small when we first started. So it, it tells you something that there's, there's definitely a, uh, you know, opportunities in this music business. And uh, so we give a shout out to them. Uh, and as, as well as SIR at SIR-USA.com, where they do all the backline and the folks. And uh, we'll be right back here with, with Colt Westbrook of Walrus Audio, my partner in crime, Mr. Paul Berezeski, and, and I will be here. And we're going to be telling you guys more about all the fun gear that Walrus has and some of the, the tales from the creation of all this fun stuff. So stay tuned. We'll be right back in a few short minutes. Thank you. 
Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com. Welcome to Music Gear Talk. Discover the tech that inspires the pros and powers today's music industry. Well, see, I got the I got the crazy tongue talking thing going on here now. <laughs> uh, it's the second segment of Inter, Inter Talk Media's Music Gear Talk Show. <laughs> wow, I, I think you're done. <laughs> I think you're done. I'm on a laughing go, guess. Go home. You're drunk. We've got this, guys. We can do it. We can do it. I believe I, I, in us. I'm so firing myself right now. That's so funny. I couldn't even get that out. But it's it's, it's cool. That's uh, you know um, the, the the island of misfit intros. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, we're here. We're here with Colt Westbrook from Walrus Audio. We're having a great time. Uh, hopefully, you folks are having a great time too. And I I think that's kind of the the whole you know premise behind uh, Walrus Audio having a great time playing music with some really cool pedals. So, you know, with that said, yeah. man, uh, you know, outside of giving, again, shout out to Pitbull Audio, who is our key sponsor and good friends, um, I want to jump right into it, man. Tell us about the the, the, the the products that you have. What are the big, you know, what, what what is everyone loving and what are some of the products, you know, like that, the, the hidden gems that they should know about? Um, well, I'll tell you what, uh, the... Walrus really turned a corner with the Julia Chorus vibrato. And so me and Jason were really geeking out on the Ryan Adams self-titled record that came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, three years ago. And, I mean, it's just Jazz Master, clean Jazz Master and Chorus, <laughs> you know. And uh, it, it it was really inspiring. And so, you know, you kind of started hearing Chorus start coming back on guitars in, in some of the – indie scenes and and things like that and you know you it's like a love it's like i really like that but i don't know if we're totally into it yet i don't know if we're ready to bring chorus back fully yet um but after that album dropped we're just like man we really gotta dig our hands into chorus and see what we can do and so we met up with uh we actually met up with ryan adams and his crew when they came through oh, uh tulsa oklahoma and just kind of talked about course chorus course pedals what pedals they're using on the record um and uh and all that kind of stuff and so that was really inspiring to do that and then we took kind of the inspiration and high off that meeting and, and came back to oklahoma city and started 
started uh, breadboarding some ideas, and then just from that came the Julia Chorus. I mean, sometimes you develop stuff because you see a hole in the market or you see a trend in the market and you try to ride that wave or start a wave, but really the Julia Chorus was just like, we just want to do a chorus pedal and see what it does, and just for fun. And and it really, it quickly became uh, our our best seller and and so the deep six was really the number one for several years and then the julia chorus kind of uh uh, took the reins and and took the company kind of to a different place um and uh and yeah i mean so that that julia chorus really kind of put us on the map with a couple different people um and uh and then from then from after that we we did the uh arp 87 delay and uh th- we saw some similar success in that the goal with that was just to to make a a really well built nicely uh player friendly delay that had really good uh really good options for delay voicings uh, with tap tempo and we really wanted it you know because we love the people we really wanted it to be under two hundred dollars somehow and so uh it's so hard when I mean, you're looking for delays and you're like, Oh, I want all these things, but it's $400. And so we're like, Oh, let's just, let's try Let's see what we can do. And so, uh, and then, and then we did the same thing with the fathom, you know, the fathom was kind of like a, we really wanted to, we have the descent reverb and the descent reverb has just magnificent tweakability. You can do lots of different things on the descent. And so we wanted to take some of the stuff we loved about the descent, make it a little smaller and a little bit more guitar friendly, user intuitive. Uh, and uh, and the cool thing about the descent and the ARP 87 is we really wanted to do uh, on both of them. So two uh, kind of traditional voicings for delay and reverb. So on the Fathom, say for example, on the Fathom, you have hall and then you have plate, which are pretty traditional reverb sounds. Yeah, yeah. And then on the other side, you have a lo-fi reverb and then you have another one we're calling sonar, which is adding octaves into the wet side of the reverb. So two kind of traditional sounds and then two more walrus experimental sounds. And we did that same thing on the R57 and the Fathom and, and kind of those three are, 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 uh, you know, the bread and butter for, for walrus at this time. And so, uh, and they're a lot of fun, man. There's a lot of fun to play. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and I, I think we did a, we did recently did a, this wasn't on our, our gear talk, but we recently did a, uh, uh, you know, a, a preview of, uh, of our, uh, your, your overdrive pedal. And, uh, Paul, what, what did, what, what else did we do? I know we did the preview of the overdrive pedal. Um, uh, on Sharpen the Axe? Yeah, on Sharp- well, we didn't do the preview of Sharp- on Sharpen the Axe. We just did that for Pitbull Audio. Oh. That's on their Pitbull Audio YouTube page. Um, what was You're it? talking about it. Yeah. Which overdrive? Do you know? Remember? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I just I just had it up and I closed it out because it started talking to me. <laughs> I forgot it was on <laughs> play. So I, I, I stopped that, but I had uh, I had uh, went to that one. It was, uh, you know, that's a good question. I know we did um, the on, on the uh, on Sharpen the Axe. I know we, we had some of those. Which ones did we have, Paul? Uh, I think we had the, I think we had the Julia and I think maybe the 385 Overdrive. Oh yeah, there we go. It's, it's now we're talking. It's kind of that combo is fun. It's kind of mixed in my head to get uh, together now because every time I go to uh, it, it was Audio, they have the whole board set up of all your pedals, and I just like go crazy on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, no, it, it was the three. It was the, the three eighty five for sure. That was the one we did go. the preview yeah. of, and then they also had it on um, on uh, Shop the Axe. So we're talking hidden gems. I was gonna. That was gonna start talking about the three eighty five because you know we, it's not very popular because people don't. You know, people are like, you know, they want to get on Google and type in, you know, tube, best tube screamer, or boutique tube screamer, or something, or best, you know, plexi or something, you know, that kind of stuff. And nobody's nobody's googling best pedal made from the audio section of a vintage film projector. You know? <laughs> so it gets it gets lost in the in the mix a little bit because I don't think people know what to do with it, and so. Uh, but we really wanted to make like an amp like uh, an amp like overdrive, something that was really dynamic, that cleaned up with like soft picking and really got gritty and saturated when you when you dug in. And uh, 
but we were also at the same time listening to uh, a couple Dawes records and uh, some Blake Mills records uh, and stuff like that. And we went to, we went to a Dawes show and they were playing these like uh, they were play, which looked like film projectors and they were in these ammo cans and they were connected to cabs and we're like, what in the world is that? It's the best sound I've ever heard in my life. And then we kind of dug into it a little bit and there's this uh, there's this guy in Los Angeles. His name's Austin Hooks, and he's taking these vintage, it's called the Bell and Howell Filmo Sound Projector, the 385 Filmo Sound Projector, 385 is the, the model number, and uh, basically the audio section of the film projector is is built like a guitar amp, and so huh, didn't realize they're, that. They're, he's trading in a couple components in and out of this thing, and then turning them into guitar amps, and uh, and, and I mean, they just sound, they sound full uh, and beautiful and very colorful. And, uh, and so we were like, man, we, we would love to do a pedal that, that emulates that, that, that type of saturation and that, uh, that audio quality. And so the 385, uh, came from that and it's, it's probably my favorite walrus pedal. Um, so, so that's, that to me is kind of the, the sleeping giant, the hidden gem at walrus. Cause, cause most people that play them, keep them around but but yeah we don't we don't sell a whole lot of them but we're going to keep it around forever because it's definitely my favorite well i think that's why eric you know usually eric over at pitbull audio uh pulls these out and says this is some of the fun ones i want to talk about you know and it's, it's very personal for him and uh, you know we kind of uh you know help to 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 bring that to life and i think that's why we did you know that's like uh you know one of the pedals that we did as a just a, a, a just kind of an overview and then they also did a uh you know, kind of a, a, a in-depth review of it and played around with it and and yeah. and, and showed how that that all all functions. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. I'll, I'll make sure we send out the the links to the ones that we've done so that you guys get them. I don't know if we did that before, but uh, I think it'd be good for you guys to see that we we you know we definitely were uh, thinking about you guys on that fun stuff. And we've got about yeah, three, I'd love to see it. We got about three minutes left. Here's my question for you from a business standpoint. How are you guys getting your message out differently than your your competition? What are you using? You know, what's been working for you from uh, you know the the, the marketing side? Um, the easy stuff, the easy answer is social media, Instagram, and Facebook, and blah blah blah. Um, uh, but I think today uh, you have to. It, well, it's in any industry. You have to think about what your what your customer base is thinking about. And I think a lot of gear companies think that their customer base is thinking about gear. And and really in the MI industry, uh, and this isn't truth, and I can't I can't back this up with research and data, but this is this is what we operate under, and and what we found you know to be helpful for us is is we operate under the assumption that our our customer base is thinking about music, not necessarily gear all the time. They're thinking about making music, and they want to be in the music industry and not the music instruments industry. And I think a lot of music instrument companies are, are marketing like their music instruments companies. And so, but we found that if we start to tend to market ourselves um, and, and show our relevance in the music industry and in the music making process and the music creation process, uh, that really, that really ignites more passion from the customers. And, and our goal is really just to keep our customers close with really exciting and helpful and engaging content rather than ads and, yeah, you yeah. know, demo, demo videos get old, ads get old, paper, you know, guitar ads, guitar magazine ads get old. And, and so we're out really trying to make content that, that inspire musicians and that, that grow the greater pool of, of people wanting to make music and then pedals will for sure find its way into that. Oh yeah, definitely. You guys out yeah. in, the, in the clubs, you at the concert halls, is that what you're doing? Say it one more time. Are you guys out in the clubs and concert halls with the, uh, with the guys that are you know, using the tools or? <laughs> yeah, no, we, we go to lots of, we go to a lot of shows. A lot of bands come through here through Oklahoma city and come through Tulsa, which is about an hour away. And, yeah, yeah. and so we do a lot of, uh, we do a lot of concerts, uh, a lot of meetups, and we actually have a guy here named uh, Philip Hunsicker that that is is everybody's every artist's favorite person, and uh, and 
it's it's part of his job just to to make sure that that artists have our pedals uh, at least to try out and if they like it and uh, yeah and I love going to Nam and I see artists that I love and and that have inspired me and I go up to them like hey I'm Colt and uh, from Walrus and they're like who and I'm like I'm Colt I work at Walrus they're like oh yeah Philip I know Philip and so <laughs> Philip has a Philip has a, a knack for for creating relationships with these guys and being hospitable and yeah. so yeah we go to, go to lots of shows for sure very cool man well hey we're down to the last uh 30 seconds here and uh man i appreciate you brother appreciate you uh sharing with us yeah. your, your company uh you know history and the passion and the heart and soul of it all man and uh you know we definitely want to do more things with you we're going to be doing more things with you guys because uh we playfully say when you've been on enter talk radio and Intertalk Media, you are uh, pretty much been jumped in, so you have to be jumped out to not be have been here with us. So. <laughs> honored, I'm honored. But uh, cool. yeah, definitely. Um, you know, as we go into the commercial break, stay on, and we'll talk a bit more after. But uh, uh, folks, thank you very much for tuning in to Intertalk Media. Connect to all things music, Pitbull Audio, Mission and Journey. Thanks again for the contest. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one-song mix offer. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beat, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Brew. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al Dimiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie's Groove.com. Ready to get your groove on? 